there, friend. Eivor? Swanbro, I... No. Gods, no. Don't say it, please, Eivor. Don't say it. I am sorry. Oh! My hope! No! My poor swan! Oh, gods! He fought bravely and turned the tide to secure a victory. Your dear Hunwald died a hero and will be so remembered. Oh, gods. I know he would have fainted to hear such praise from your lips. Thank you, Eivor. Thank you. He walks among warriors now. Yes. The lucky man. I imagine he does. I know words are poor salve for a wounded heart. I will leave you to mourn and know that we are here for you, always, as you need us. Something for you. A message. Quite strange. Something for me. What is it? A letter requesting your presence in the southwest. A village called Athelny. Nothing strange about a summons for me, is there? It is not the recipient I find strange. It is the sender. The letter is signed a poor fellow soldier of Christ. Ah, our mysterious partner. For a short time, I hoped it might be Bassam feeding us the names of these targets. He seemed the most likely man, for a time. Only one way to discover the truth. Thank you, Hytham. I will take care of this. Good to see you, darling. Hampton Shire has fallen, and with it, the Kingdom of Wessex. But the cost was great. Maybe too great for all we gained. Rest then. You have earned it. On the backs of so many. Time will tell if it was worth it. to be learned, or message to be gleaned. Often my father liked to take me on hunts in the forested lands east of Arvaldsnes. <laughs> Loved these solitary times with him. I had never felt a beast myself, and my father saw that this upset me. I was only a boy, but I had the dreams of being a man. So one winter, my father asked me to perform a bargaining ritual to the goddess Skadi to improve his bow skill and snow sight. With glee warming my heart, I cut a hair and sacrificed... Hush now. Were you at the good part yet? With glee warming my heart, I cut a hair and sacrificed it to the goddess, asking in exchange of skill and sight for my father. When the ritual was done, Bring the sail in. my father and I set off into the forest. We hunted all day until night fell, and we slew no game. That night, around the fire, I was sullen. My sacrifice had not been heeded, 
Yet seeing my sad face, my father only smiled. Had you been hunting, he said, you would have killed six fine deer. For Scotty, here's only those who speak to her. Yeah! Oh. Yes, hello. I, I do not mean to intrude, but I am looking for someone. And who would that be then? I... I do not know exactly. Well, that would be why you ain't found him. But you're free to pass the time just here if you like. Thank you. Soul cakes, love. Do you know soul cakes? I do, I enjoy them. They're small things, size of a lumpy fist, so they'll bake fast. Keep your eyes sharp. And the butter, do I baste them? No need, love. We leave the butter for meal time. I look forward to it. Right then. I'll leave you to this. If you need me, I'll be doing the washing up next door. Quite a step down from your former work, Lord. As their guest, I volunteer to help with the daily chores. They offer me a bed. I tend the cakes. Do they not feel strained giving orders to their king? Or do they know? That knowledge would benefit no one. I read your message. You went through a great deal of trouble to obscure yourself as this poor soldier of Christ. As I remember, you even sent yourself one of these letters in Winchester. A clever touch. The Order wanted me dead. I had to be careful. You said you knew nothing about the Order then. Pled ignorance. But you knew everything. Their names. Their schemes. Would you join me for a walk? You look well, Avo. I am. The wars have ended. And my settlement thrives. The wars have not ended. You have simply stopped fighting. But men are brewing plots in mead halls and bedrooms. You will see. And how are you, Alfred? Getting used to the idea of being unremarkable? I am well. Better than I expected. In this exile, I have found a somewhat nourishing peace. Each morning, I am awakened by the sun and growling cormorants. I bathe in the chilly water of the marsh. I eat from shrubs and drink from buckets. It is a good life. Simple. Blessed. I've never been so far west. I find it quite peaceful here. Calming. I have traveled a long way to hear one name, Alfred. Who is the Otis Grand Magister? Tell your shadowy friends that England is swept clean. Your work is done. You? Grand Magister was not a title I desired. It passed to me on the death of my brother. From my father before him. Defilers of God's majesty and grandeur. I was their master. And I loathed them. With Goodwin, I set a plan in motion to destroy the order from within. But my troubles with the Danes delayed that plan. But your trouble with this Dane 
is what led to their demise. You are Norse, are you not? You have a good year. I owe you my thanks, Eivor. For that, I give you this. The key to my study. That you may better understand the good you have done. With the order all but destroyed, you have made room for a greater idea. One to take its place. A universal divine order, inspired by God for the betterment of man. With a poor fellow soldier at its head. You have saved England. Whether or not that was your intent. Now let England save you. England is no more, Lord. You are the last of her kings. And yet you have no kingdom. Look around you. God's works are wondrous. They cannot be ignored. Nor resisted. In time, all those who accept God will flourish, and all those who defy him will fall away. Should you remain in England, you too will one day be her subject. Oh, bloody crumbs! The cakes are burnt! Where is that man? Young man, where have you gone? Damn. That may have earned me a night of washing linens. I do not know if we shall meet again, Eivor. God willing, we will. As one lord to another, perhaps. I'm coming, my lady. I'm here. <laughs> Alfred gave me a key to unlock his study. Somewhere in Winchester. Good lady, forgive me. I was lost in thought. No matter. Just let him cool and we'll begin again. Direct me and I will obey. That is yeti.
see me, this will get messy. Study. What secrets has he kept hidden away? Rantings and ravings, not unlike full case delusions. Is there more to all this than I understand? time. Good day to you, Eivor. Eivor, did Basim contact you in Norway? He said he would be joining you. Yet here you are, and I have no word from him. Hytham, this will be hard to hear, but Basim attacked us in Norway. Vengeance for some transgression of ours imagined or real. You mean... You mean you slew him yourself? Sigurd and I, together. I know this comes as a... I do not understand. Why would he do such a thing? He loved Sigurd, he loved you. I do not understand it myself. Perhaps one day we can speak about this with more clarity. But for now, I am deeply sorry. Here you are, Hytham. The last of the Order's sigils. You will find King Alfred's among them. King Alfred? Did our poor fellow soldier lead you to his hiding place? He did, for they were one and the same. Our poor fellow soldier of Christ. 
was the Grand Magister of the Order of the Ancients. He turned on his own order. Fascinating. Not turned so much as trampled. His devotion to Christ and what he calls a universal order set him against them from the start. With all sincerity, he loathed the title and the duty he had inherited and wished them destroyed. Wonderful. With his abdication, the last stronghold of the order has been dismantled. All that remain are scraps here and there. And you, Eivor. Now that you have seen our enemy and you understand our cause, I wonder if you would join us. Become a hidden one. Was this your ultimate goal, Hytham? A trial by fire? It is a kind offer, but I do not believe we fight for quite the same cause. Your creed demands that you keep your triumphs hidden. I prefer my glory to be in plain view for all to see. If I taught you our creed, if you spent time with it, it could open your mind to another view. Another view is always welcome. But to live without celebrating one's glory and honor and achievements is not a life for me. But know this. I would give my life in a moment for those I love and who love me in return. All here. Including you, my friend. I understand you well, Eivor. Very well indeed. Between you and me, Aver, always thought you'd be a good child. About you and Bridget, when do you wish to be wed? The sooner I can make her my wife, the happier I will be. But we are fine to wait until everything has settled here. Enough waiting. Cool your forge and cover your anvil. Let's get you married. Wonderful. Shall we gather everyone? Gather your wife and your courage. I will bring the people together. I am honored to stand before you, Gunnar, Bridget, on this bountiful day, to celebrate the strength of your bond and to see you wed. I am in witness of a love that inspires and empowers. I invite you now to speak your vows. To you, my darling Bridget, I offer this blade, forged in flames that burn as brightly as my heart does for you. A blade as sharp as your wit, as glinting as your beauty. May it sing through the air as sweetly as your voice meets my ears. Dio, see you did carry to Gunnar. To never am locust, would it be the door to heat a tea and hurry out? And I, you, I give you my sword and my promise that I will stand at your side forever. Heed for the prodigy and future and heen, and the sword tawaloch in hope, a premonition. On the mount of scrying a foresight, para toivi a sweeping adventure meeting 
Tiur enaid fel dim arall. A dyn a strong aburetiki. Ac fel as i ffyrs, mae'r calon yn hedfan dyr y ti. Such poetry, oh dear. You make me cry, my love. Let us head for Evan Gillian, Trebowid and beyond. I offer you this ring. And take yours in kind. I will wear it with pride and honor, warmed by the love of so perfect a lady. And I gwisk of a Valcalon adoration of Fee than Bith. This is the greatest day of my life. Embrace me, my love. With our couple now bonded in matrimony, now we drink. Volka, I want to thank you for all you've done for me. My visions have lessened of late, and I... Well, I find it hard to explain how different I feel. Grounded. Unified. At peace. That is good to hear, Eivor. Very good to hear. It is a strange feeling, brother. Weddings are the beginning of something, but this... feels like something of an end. The first happy union in our home. We have matured into something greater. So yes, a beginning and an end, I think. Me, warrior, let golden glory be our meat and meat. And how are the marriage customs in your country, Hytham? Something like this? Like this in all the most important ways. There are smiles, cheers, and warm embraces. All that is needed, I think. Alvis, I'm surprised you did not serenade the bride and groom with a verse or two. Oh, I wished to, I did. But all that came to me were insults and jibes. Another time, I think. Richard, I gift you a formal welcome to our clan and our family. You are a fine addition to Gunnar's life and to ours. Dear Javier, I couldn't be more happy to go, ma. Hope you never see worse in the case of me so the years. Yes, of course. I, uh... As I say, it is wonderful to have you. Gunner, you old trout. You're a married man. Never thought I would see the day. Nor did I. And not for lack of trying. <clears throat> You've been among us for quite some time, Redder. Are you ready to settle? Make a home here? For a year or two, perhaps. But I am not the settling kind. I am a wanderer. Always searching, never finding. Maybe one day. Randvi, saw you looking a little lonely. Thought I might come and join you. How nice. Are you enjoying yourself? I am. I never thought I would see gruff old Gunner so enraptured by a woman. Enraptured by anything, for that matter. He's a hard one to read, but I am pleased for him, and for this day of rest and respite. After everything, a few days of feasting will do the people some good. They need this. They do. Will you walk with me? Anywhere. Lead on. Something has been on my mind for some time. I am no seer, but I foresaw this day long ago. Not Gunnar's marriage, but our situation. Our success. How do you mean our success? 
I mean to say that I saw our settlement flourishing, through our victories in war and in diplomacy. And from the day we set out from Norway, I knew that you would make a fitter leader than Sigurd. It was never in his character to lead. It was always within yours. I see. Do you? You might have warned me. You would not have listened. Fair. I do hope you see it now, in all that you have done for us. Grand V, you and the people here have done more for me than I could ever repay. I am honored by your faith in me, and your confidence. As I am honored by your love. And I by yours. Eivor, I want you to know that Sigurd and I are... We are severing the bonds of our marriage. We share a love that is steadfast, and I have faith it will forever be so, but my heart is yours. That much he knows. And I believe he is happy for us. Are you sure? Sigurd's desires are bigger than any man or woman can offer. He longs for something more. Something only he can find. All he wants is far, far away. All I need is right here. Shall we find our way back to the wedding? Bridget might give another speech. We must not miss that. About that, I have not understood a single word of her since Gloucestershire. Really? I find she speaks beautifully. With poetry, even. Are you kidding? Am I? Come, we should go. I should go.
day to you. You and Petra chasing a white elk in the woods high as wispy clouds, my god! I could barely breathe for laughing. Beautiful, beautiful. Nature is amazing. Happy to say I've refreshed my stocks. I must take my leave. So long. Hope to see you again soon.
menace. Someone placed a seal here. How long ago, I wonder? Let's go. Sail! Yeah, Catch yeah. the wind! I know a crazed man about my age called Roker. We are taken to calling Roker the Rodent for his habit of collecting axes. For 20 years, he collected axes of all make and size. He had never seen a day of battle, but he swore to Thor that he would. In his 31st year, after drinking too much ale, Roker seduced another man's wife. That man 
called a Holmgang against Roker. Roker accepted the Holmgang, and on the agreed upon day, he laid out twelve of his axes and asked, Which of these will I use to slay you? Will it be Bone Splitter? He said. My bearded blade inscribed with Sather runes, affixed to a handle of English oak? Or Blood Fountain? He continued. My Danax which swings through the air on two hands with the speed of an arrow's flight. Or might it be Twin Wolf Wounder? Roker growled, throwing even more bold. Fierce pair of throwing axes. At that moment, the man who had challenged Roker brought a large stone down upon his head. Roker died instantly, and his axes were given away as gifts. <laughs> Sing us a song. Hold on. Are you feeling all right? What are you doing? Sail out! Sing, my ravens. Let the sail out! Sail out!
We're up. We'll sail. Is it you? 